So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the sine law and the need of the sine law. It is different than what we've done in the last couple of uh, lessons. Um, if I want to illustrate this a little bit, we say the sine law. Okay, put that out here. All right, with the sine law, the thing is, is we've done the primary trig ratios. So the primary trig ratios we talked about the last couple of uh, lessons are for right angle triangles. Okay, so right triangles. That's what we're looking for. The sine law we need for non-right triangles. Okay, non-right triangles. Non-right triangles all right, triangles that don't have that 90 degree angle with them. All right, so if we draw any triangle like this and label it A, B, and C, all right, you see there's nothing in there to indicate that it's a 90 degree angle in there. Okay, you may say, oh, well, this looks like a 90 degree in there, but if the question doesn't have it or the um, the diagram doesn't have it there, then you cannot assume that it is uh, a 90 degree. So what we're looking at is non-right triangles. There's no 90 degree angle in there. And one thing that we have to know is when we have the angle measured with this capital A, the opposite side length, okay, let me bring that back in there, the opposite side length is little a. Okay, the opposite side of angle B is little b, and the opposite side of angle C is our little c. It's important here when we're dealing with the sine law to, um, to know what the labels are because the sine law can be written like this. This is why it's called the sine law. The ratio of sine to angle A over the side length of A, this ratio here is equal to whatever or the sine of B is divided by the side length of B. It's also equal to the sine of angle C divided by the side length C. All right. What's important here, what you're going to see and identify and know when to use the sine law is if you have an angle that's known, okay, and the opposite side length known. If you have this relationship in a non-right triangle, then you can use the sine law. And that's the big key right there, okay? You need, all right, you need to know the angle and it's opposite, opposite side length. Okay, so here's a here's an example. We'll take a look. We'll keep the sine law up there, and we'll say, all right, with example one, let's just say we've got a basic uh, triangle here. We label it ABC. All right, we happen to know. Um, let's say a, a 30 degree angle here, uh, B could be a, I don't know, something bigger, let's just call it a uh, 67 degree angle there, all right, and we happen to have side length A as 10 meters long. What we want to do is we want to find out what is side length B, okay? So here's how we have this. The first thing we have to understand is we're in a non-right triangle, so we have to use the sine law in this case. All right. Why is it the sine law in particular? Because we know the angle and its opposite side length. These are known. So what we do here is we write down, okay, well the sine law says, we started off, I said it was the sine of A over the side length A, and in this case, since we're dealing with B, we can say the sine of B over B. That's true. We can also use, if we flip these fractions upside down, we can say the sine of angle A is equal to the side length of A over or B over here divided by the sine of angle B. And why that's important is because we're looking for the side length. It's unknown. 
what I always do when I deal with these trig questions, especially with the um, with the sine law and then the cosine law that we'll be doing in the uh, next couple of lessons here, is I always put the unknown on top. All right. If I'm looking for this side length here, well then I'm going to have it on top. And what I'll do is when I write my solution down, my question, I'm going to put it first because I can switch the equation around. The sine A can switch over to the right hand side. Okay, just like this. It's the same thing. It's the same law. It means the same. So I'll fill in the blanks. B I don't know, but I do know the sine of angle B or this, the angle B is 67 degrees. Side length A is 10 and then I have the sine of A which I know is 30 degrees. So here's why I always put the unknown up top the way I have it here okay and have it here is because all I need to do is to isolate it to figure out what the B is is I take the denominator and I multiply it up to the numerator on the other side. So then that's 10 times the sine of 67 degrees and then I still have the divide by the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, So it's important to understand where everything comes from, where you can get this B all by itself isolated. So if you don't understand it, just take a moment, hit pause on the video uh, until you realize where everything comes from and then you can move on. What I'd like you to do is try to calculate what is the right side here. In your calculator, again, it's use the same calculator every day, figure out how you have to put everything in. All right, so I've got uh, 10 times a sine of 67. I normally put an equals to that, so my calculator knows what it is, and then I divide by the sine of 30, and everybody should be getting 18.41. Okay, so it's approximately 18.41. Uh, and in this case, since I said meters, the whole thing is, is meters. So this side length here, B, we now know is 18.41. All right. One thing to also take note to make sure that you're kind of doing it right along the way, okay, is the smaller angle is opposite the smaller side length. Okay, so you can see that 67 is bigger than 30, so that means its side length needs to be bigger than the opposite of, of uh, angle A, so the 10 here. So we are good here, all right? We can calculate the other side. We can calculate the C side here, all right? Um, what we want to do is just figure out what angle C is. And we're going to use the sum of the angles of a triangle theorem, you know that 180 degree thing, that all the angles add up to 180 degrees. So if we just start with 180 degrees and take away the 67 degrees and then take away the 30 degrees, we'll get our angle C that we want. So in the calculator, you subtract the 67 degrees, you subtract the 30 degrees, and you're going to end up with 83 degrees. So that's what angle C is okay 83 degrees since it's the largest angle when we calculate and use the sine law we should find out that the side length C is the largest angle it needs to be bigger than the 18.41 because 83 degrees is bigger than 64 degrees so that means the angle side length or the side lengths okay need to correspond the same way all right so we're looking for angle or side length C, so I would use C in this case. And it's the sine law, so that's over the sine of C. That's going to be equal to what we already know. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to what we've been given. We were given the 30 degrees and the 10, this opposite. We know that there's no error. We had to calculate the 18.41 so since it's calculated we're not going to use it even though we know it and we we're pretty sure we're right uh, side length a is 10 and then the angle of a is 30 degrees okay so this is the known side so again what we do is fill in what we know with C 83 all right equals 10 over the sine of 30 degrees and again 
since we have it written this way, we multiply that denominator to the numerator on the other side. So we end up with 10 times the sine of 83 degrees divided by the sine of 30 degrees. All right. So again, make sure you understand where they all come from. You can always pause the video until you figure it out, and then you can move on and then do the calculations. So I want you to get the calculations in there. It's 10 times the sine of 83 degrees, and then you're going to divide by the sine of 30 degrees. And in this case, we end up with 19.85 and that's meters again, which is awesome because it has to be bigger than all the other ones, and it is. 19.85 is bigger than 18.41, and it's also bigger than the initial 10 that we have there. Okay, so that's using the sine law, and that's finding uh, missing angles, or missing side lengths. The other way we can do it and use the sine law is to actually find a missing angle. Okay, and again, it's with a non-right triangle. So again, if we just simply draw our non-right triangle, again, we'll just label it ABC. All right, and in this case, let's say we have uh, one of the angles happens to be, um, we'll switch it up and we'll say it's 40 degrees over there. All right, we know the opposite side length is going to be, let's say it's 15.5. All right, and in this case, we know the opposite, uh, or we know another side length. Let's say the other side length happens to be, um, oh, I don't know, let's just call it 17.2. All right, we'll do meters in each case. What we want to do is solve for B. All right, we don't know what that is. So, again, we have this opposite relationship. This is known to us, and that means we're going to use sine law. It's a non-right triangle. We have the opposite known angle, known uh, side length. We use sine law. So this time, I'm going to start with the unknown. In this case, it's angle B. So it's the sine of B. So we're flipping the sine law kind of upside down again. And it's opposite the uh, side length B which now equals our sine of A over the side length of A. All right, fill in the blanks, fill in what we know and what we don't know. We know B is 17.2. We know we have the sine of A, um, which is 40 degrees, over the side length of A. All right, and here's what we do. Again, we take the denominator, and we multiply it up top to the numerator on the other side. So we have the sine of B is equal to 17.2 times the sine of 40 divided by 15.5. Okay? Now, you can figure that out right now. All right? Figure out you're going to get a decimal. So we've got the sine of B. If we calculate this all out, so 17.2 times the sine of 40 degrees, and then divide that by 15.5. You're going to get a decimal, and I, what I'd like you to do is try to keep all the decimals in this part of it um, that your calculator says. It's a lot, and I get it. So if you're calculating everything out, you want to be somewhat accurate. All right. Well, you have the sine of B. In order to get the angle B itself, like we did the other day or the other lessons, we calculate the sine inverse of both sides, which turns out when we do this, okay, it's written this way. You have the sine inverse of, and in brackets, you put the number that the calculator shows you, the whole thing, all right, so we can be accurate. And then you calculate that. You put that in. So it's the sine inverse. So you do your, you normally it's your shift key or your second function key. You press the sine button and it should have sine inverse there. And then you can re punch in all the numbers the 7, 1, 3, 2, 8, 6, 8, 9, 5, 9, and the brackets. And it turns out that the angle B is approximately 45.5 degrees. Okay, that's the thing with this one. 
All right, so you got the 45.5. What's key when we're looking at this, all right, is how to go from the sine of B down to angle B, right? We're taking the sine inverse of each side, all right? So that's the basics. Um, the basis of using the sine law right now. Uh, you can take a look at the questions in uh, the textbook, page 3132 and numbers 1 to 4.